Hey, what's going on guys? In today's video, we're going to look at how to create this title animation. And we're going to start here on the Fusion page. Let's bring a text note. First of all, we're going to just write our text in the text box. First things first, and then we're going to change the font. I'm going to go with impact. I think it just goes better with this animation. Now let's just bring up the size a little bit here. And now let's go to the transform tab. We're going to change transform from characters to lines. Now let's come to the shear setting here. We're going to change the X and Y just by bringing them down a little bit. Now, as you can see, these changes will apply at a line level instead of the character level because we changed transform earlier from characters to lines. All right, so now let's uh, go to the shading tab here. All we're going to do is just to change the color to something that you feel is fitting for this animation. Now we're going to create the outline by enabling the second element here, uh, making sure that enabled is checked first of all. So this will by default give us a red outline. We're going to change the color to black instead. Now we're going to change the line thickness just by bringing up the thickness setting here quite a bit. I just think it's a better look. Okay, so now at this point, guys, our text is ready for animation. So the first thing we're going to do here is to right click the text box and then in the menu, we're going to go ahead and select character level styling. So now this is going to activate the modifiers tab. Let's click into that and then we are going to go ahead and keyframe right click here to animate a character level styling. So now let's select the two words up top. Let's go to the transform tab and then we're going to just simply push them to the left hand side of the screen and then we're going to select the word at the bottom and then we're going to push it to the right hand side of the screen. So now let's uh, just move over a few more frames and then uh, we are going to go back to the text tab and then we're going to make sure that we keyframe right click here uh, to animate character level styling again. And this time around with the word animation selected, we're going to go back to the transform tab and we're going to make sure that the offset setting here is uh, returned to zero. So this will return the text to its original position. And we're going to do the same for the two words up top there. Make sure that offset setting is set to zero. So now you guys will see a simple animation for this entire text. However, we're going to just spice it up a bit by bring up the spline editor and we're going to select this setting here. Make sure that we zoom in to these two keyframes and then uh, we are just going to select both of them, hit the F key and then we're going to just bring up the uh, left keyframe here a little bit and then we're going to push the right keyframe out by holding down the uh, option key. This will ensure that it moves in a straight line. And if we have a look at this animation now, guys, it's uh, looking way more professional. So now we're ready for the second part of the animation. And to do that, we're going to come to the end of the first animation. And now let's go to the text box here. We're going to right click and then in the menu, select the modifier. So this is going to stack a modifier on top of an existing modifier, which is a pretty cool trick. So we're going to first of all, change the delay setting here to 0.5. And then we're going to change water from automatic to random, but one by one. So this is going to ensure that each character is going to pop off one by one with a delay in between each character. Okay, so now let's uh, just uh, simply go to the shading tab and we're going to make sure that the second element is enabled as well. So now let's go back to the first element. We're going to go ahead and keyframe the offset setting under position. And now this is going to bring up a path one setting here. We're going to ignore that and go back to the follower uh, setting. And the next thing we're going to do is just uh, uh, move over about 12 frames. And then we're going to keyframe the offset setting again by just making sure that uh, we create this effect that looks like each character is, is sort of popping out. And you can see that is the kind of effect, the kind of look that we're going for here. So once this is done, now we're going to just repeat this same process for the second element. But the key thing here to remember is that for the second element, we're going to make sure that the, the setting is going to be exactly the same as the first element so that the uh, text outline itself as well as the text are going to be moving in sync. So now once you've done that, you're going to see that now we have this simple animation that looks like each character is kind of popping out randomly. But uh, one thing you are noticing is that there's a bit of a muddiness in between each character. It, we can't really easily tell which one's in the foreground and which one is in the background. So that is what we're going to fix next. So now let's take it back to the tools tab and we're going to go to the shading tab and uh, under sort by, we're going to change it from priority to distance. 
So now you guys will see that you can clearly tell which character is in front of which. And it just makes this random effect look way more pronounced. It just looks way much better. So now all we're going to do, you guys, is uh, to just uh, spice up this animation a bit. Let's just bring up the spline editor. And the first thing we're going to do here is to uncheck everything. So to make sure that only offset 1 and offset 2 are selected. Uh, which we just adjusted earlier and then we're just going to zoom in a bit to these keyframes and then uh, we're going to select all of them and then hit the F key and then we're going to hit Control T. This is going to bring up the easing and ease out setting. We're just going to adjust the easing and ease out a bit here and the reason I'm using this is because I want these two settings to have the exact same easing and ease out. So now you guys uh, can see that if we were to play this animation, not only is this animation looking very professional, but also it looks like they are in perfect synchronization with one another. And that's exactly what we're going for here. OK, so now we're ready to create a long shadow effect for each character. And we're going to move to the end of the second uh, animation here. Now let's uh, bring in a duplicate note, which you can find under effect. And then we're going to just plug it right after the text node. And then we're going to change the number of copies, first of all, to 90. This will just ensure that the shadow is going to look clean. And now we're going to change the center X and Y settings here until it's reached you know, your desired look. So for me, this looks pretty good and I'm going to stick with this. So now let's uh, move to the uh, beginning of the second animation here. And then we're going to set a keyframe for the number of copy setting, the copy setting here, and then change it uh, to uh, a one at this point. And then uh, we're going to just move over uh, about 12 frames, which is the end of the second animation here. And then we're going to just uh, bring the number of copies back up to 90. So at this point, the text animation is pretty much complete, but we still need to work on those white lines that's going to flash across the text. So to do that, we're going to just move over a few more frames and then we're going to bring a background note and then we're going to connect it back to the duplicate node as a foreground here. And then we're going to change the color, first of all, from black to white. And then we're going to bring the rectangle uh, masking note connected to the background note. So a few things we're going to do here, first of all, just bring down the width setting here quite a bit. Uh, we just need a much narrower line here. And then we're going to change the angle setting so that it kind of lines up with the angle of the text. Now let's just bring up the height setting all the way up to one. So now we're going to just place this text on the left side of the character of our text. And then we're going to then uh, set a keyframe here at this point. And then let's uh, move over about 24 frames, which is one second in my example here. Now this text is going to just move across the text to the right side. And now we're going to simply copy and paste this rectangle masking node. So now you're going to have a duplicate. And then we're going to, first of all, just move it over to the left hand side a little bit here. And then we're going to just bring down the width a little bit more so that it looks different, you know, from the first one. And then we also make sure that it's going to have a little bit of a gap from the first one too. Now let's come to the end here. We're going to just make sure that again, it's going to be placed on the left side of the uh, the other line, the original line. And now all we're going to do is to copy and paste this node. So now we have a, a second duplicate here. And then we're going to once again, make sure that we this line, this third line is going to be placed on the left hand side. And we're going to further reduce the width so that it looks much thinner for this one. And now let's come to the end here. And then we're going to once again, just make sure that it's going to be placed on the left hand side. So now you will see this sort of uh, uh, a white line strip pattern that's going to flash across the text. But of course, the problem right now is that uh, this line is covering the entire screen rather than just the text. So that is something we're going to fix next. So to do that, we are going to leverage the bitmap node and uh, let's just bring that in. And then we're going to connect the duplicate node to the bitmap node. Now, if we look at the bitmap node right now, you're going to see that this entire text, including the shadow, is now being used. That's because we need to change the channel from alpha to red. So now you see that only the text itself is going to be used as a mask. So now let's connect it back to merge one. And if we look at it, voila, guys, only the text is now being used as a mask for these lines and then you will see this kind of these three line pattern is going to just flash across the text 
just like that that looks absolutely wonderful okay so now one other problem is that if we were to let's say come to the beginning of this uh, animation you still see those three lines there so which is not what we want so we're gonna just come to the one frame right before uh, the uh, the line starts to move we're gonna come to the merge one node here let's uh, make sure that the blend setting is keyframe bring that down to zero move over just one more frame and then bring the blend setting all the way up to one so now you will see that uh, that problem no longer exists and uh, we pretty much have our animation here all right guys one last thing here is that we're going to add just a background here by bringing a background note make sure that merge one is connected to it as a foreground and now we're just going to make sure that we change the background to something that will make this text stand out and yeah you guys uh, this is uh, pretty much it for this tutorial and this is something you guys can create today uh, in DaVinci Resolve for your project and uh, yeah I hope this helps as always I will see you next time